Hi, this is Akintola Samuel and you're welcome to another masterclass of the 90 days of breakthrough. So today, like I mentioned yesterday, I want to talk about how to follow closely. Okay, it's not enough to learn about how to follow and the impact followership can make on your life, your destiny, your marriage and your finances. You've already covered all those, you know, so I don't want to reiterate. If you have missed those videos, I'd encourage you, go back and watch the previous episodes because if you don't, you start from here, it may just not make complete sense to you, right? Because it's supposed to be a line upon line and precept upon precept. This is kind of chronological in nature, right? So I'd encourage you, go back and watch the videos. And in case you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, what are you still waiting for? This master classes are free. The least you can do is to subscribe, okay? So do that right now. Do that, do that, do that. I'm waiting. Just kidding, all right, let's move. So today the focus is on how to follow closely, right? And other effective ways you need to follow in order to maximize followership, all right? <clears throat> so yes, they will mention the fact that you need to follow hard. Right, and the second way how to follow, right, we're talking about how to follow effectively. The second way is to follow closely. Number one, you follow hard. Number two, you follow closely. And what I mean by following hard, right, I explained that, you know, extensively yesterday, so go watch it if you haven't. So the second way to follow effectively in order to maximize followership is to follow closely. Is to follow closely. Many are following, but they are too far. Many are following, but they cannot be seen. Many are following, but you don't know where they are. Many are following, but the day something needs to be transferred, they are gone. They can't be seen. They are just nowhere. Such was the life of the 50 sons of the prophets and the 7,000 that God had. You know, because the day that Elijah got discouraged and he was in the cave, and God said, why are you here? He said, I'm the holy one standing up for the cause, you know, of the God of Israel. I alone am left. No one is left. God said, well, there are 7,000 others who have not bowed their knees to bow. Question, if there were 7,000, where were these guys? They were too distant to make their voice heard. So you may be following, but does the person you are following even know that you are following? Are you close enough to receive grace? Are you close enough to be impacted? Are you close enough to be instructed? Or are you so far because of your insecurity? Some people don't like to follow closely because they've been hurt in the past. And let me tell you this, such is the nature of human relations. As long as two or more people come together, there is bound to be offenses. But you must make up your mind up front that I'm not going to be offended in followership. Because let me tell you this, no matter, even Jesus offended Peter. Do you think Peter was not going to be offended when Jesus looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan? Do you think the disciples were not offended when Jesus said he was going to die? Why do you think Peter said you are not going to die? Because we have left all to follow you. And now you say you are just going to disappear and leave us. Oh, guy, you are going nowhere. <laughs> but they followed closely. I love John the Beloved. Even on the cross, when every other person disappeared, even though they eventually, you know, came together in the upper room, John was still there at the foot of the cross. He was there. He was there. He followed closely. He followed closely. The question is, how close are you following? How close are you following? The second Kings chapter 2 verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, And Elijah said unto him, that is Elisha, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan, and he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. And the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet, the Bible says they also went, but they stood to view afar off. And only Elijah and Elisha, right, went across. You see, when you are too far, you will be distracted. When you are too far, you will be hearing multiple voices. When you are too far, you create unnecessary options that will end up becoming your distraction. How close are you? Elijah followed Elisha closely. Joshua followed Moses closely. Peter, James and John followed Jesus closely. Ruth followed Naomi closely. To follow closely is to be present and be physically available. You can't follow closely virtually. In a sense, no you can't. 
That's why I made that distinction between followership and mentorship. And mentorship is also a fantastic subject you need to understand. I'm going to be talking about that during this 90 days of breakthrough. You don't want to miss that particular masterclass. It's going to bless you. All right. But you see, there is a dimension of followership that makes it deeper than mentorship. Followership, by its very nature, can only work through proximity. Because it's about taking the steps. As a person you are following takes a step and lift those steps, right? You are putting your steps where they just lifted their own steps. It's literally walking. Like one of my favorite books by Jerry Savelle, in the footsteps of the prophet. You are taking the steps. I'm reminded how Jerry Savelle came back to the office in the days when he was still walking with Kenneth Copeland, right? And he said, Brother Copeland, you know, people have been saying this and saying that, that, you know, he said, I don't have a message of my own. I only preach exactly and everything Kenneth Copeland preaches. And Kenneth Copeland bursts into laughter. And Jerry Savelle was like, why is Brother Copeland laughing? And he said, that was what people used to say exactly about me. And don't you have the message of your own? The only thing you preach is what Kenneth Egan and Nora Robert preaches. He said, but today nobody says that anymore. You see, because when you follow closely, even when you don't plan, right to say the things those have, or that have gone ahead of you are saying when well, you don't plan to replicate their lifestyle if you are truly following some of their nature will begin to rub off on you until your own identity and uniqueness now becomes manifest your initial goal in life is not to be unique uniqueness is what you discover it's not what you determine and it's in the place of followership that your own uniqueness now comes from for instance elijah was the God, he believed in the God that answers by fire. Elijah was someone that called fire down at any moment's notice. The prophet of Baal, you want to know who the real God is? Let fire come down. Some guys showed up soldiers that didn't know how to respect the prophet Elijah. He roasted them, barbecued them, first set, second set. But you know Elijah never did that. Alright? That was not his own uniqueness. That was not his own uniqueness. The day some kids messed up and called him a bald headed man, a lion came from nowhere and turned them into pieces. He was the god of lion, the lion of Judah. It was his own uniqueness, all right? So, followership does not mean you lose your identity, but don't start out trying to be unique, you see. And in the uniqueness, it is obvious that there is really nothing unique in that uniqueness. Such is the way of many people who are so obsessed with being their, you know, their own person. You know, being unique without really having anything unique to offer. Follow closely. Follow closely. It's in the place of close followership that some things are released and transferred. The next way to follow is follow to the end. Follow to the end. Don't follow half actively. Don't follow with the mindset of I'm going to do this for three years. After three years, if I don't see any major changes, I'm going to check out. Guess what? If you are truly following, it will get to a point that you even lose track of time. Why? Because the benefit of followership would have been so much, you would not think of living your life any other way. Follow to the end. Make up your mind to follow to the end. We see at chapter 6 and verse 3, it says, Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. You've got to keep following, follow on. Not then shall we know if we just follow. We followed for one month, followed for three months. No, no, no. The disciples followed for three and a half years and even in death they still followed because jesus gave an instruction i'm about to ascend but you guys need to stay in the upper room until the holy ghost comes and guess what they did they obeyed it means even in death they were still following they followed to the end they followed to the end elijah followed elijah to the point where he was taken up the disciples of jesus followed jesus until he was lifted up into the clouds right before their eyes Ruth followed Naomi even till death, till the end. Are you willing to follow to the end? Or there is already a strategic plan. And once I follow this person, I follow God for like five years. If this happens and this does not happen, I'm going to check out of this place. You will never receive the rewards of followership that way. If you don't have the intention of following to the end. Next, follow with honor. Follow with honor. Honor is not a native of, Af of Africa. Honor is a universal language. Honor is a kingdom culture. You cannot be a believer or be someone that really wants to go far in life and not understand honor. No, it will never happen. You will be following but it will be wasted effort. Because you see, there is something about honor. Honor opens the heart of the ones you are following. Honor opens every close heart. Honor is a heart opener. 
There is no heart that can remain closed when it consistently receives honor. It is not possible. Proverbs 3 and verse 9. He says, honor the Lord with your substance. Well, not with kneeling down. Not with words. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. If you are going to follow God, you must learn to honor Him. And you say, honor is not self-determined. Honor is recipient determined. That is, you don't determine how you honor who you are following. It is who you are following that determines what honor means to them. And honor means different things to different people. So if you are going to follow with honor, you must find out what is honor to the person I'm following, what is honor to God in this specific situation, and do exactly that. Honor is fake. Let me say this, except there's an exchange of substance. That's why it says, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your substance. You can't say you honor someone and nothing, there is never any exchange. You're self-deceived. Honor is incomplete without the pattern away of your substance. Right? It doesn't have to be something huge. You see, your money is your life. And your life cannot be truly involved in something where your substance has not gone into that thing. We're going to talk about honor in another masterclass. It's really going to bless you. You see, but well, let's stay with the subject of follow. Actually, follow with honor. And last but not the least for today, follow with the right heart. Your heart has to be right. Your heart really has to be right. Your heart has to be right. If they're going to be wrong in life, be wrong in the head and not in the heart. The error of Saul was that Saul was wrong in the heart. He was wrong in the heart. The error of David is that David was wrong in the head. When David slept with Bathsheba, only God knows he, he, he was not aware of the gravity of what he was doing. He just kept messing up. He took a prophet to point out the error of his ways. But Samuel, when he told Saul that this is what you have done, you have done foolishly, you are not supposed to offer the sacrifice. You know what Saul said? He said, it doesn't matter. Still pretend, let's pretend together as if God is with me, as if you are on my side. Wow. He was not interested in making corrections. He was just interested in the public image. He was interested in the show. He was interested in what people were saying. Because his heart was not right. And someone said, when you were little in your own eyes, didn't God lift you and make you king over all Israel? Let your heart be right. Follow with the right heart. Follow with the right heart. When you follow with the right heart, whatever it is that is on the life of the ones you are following, will definitely find expression in your own life. I'm always concerned about people who claim to follow. And after a couple of years, you don't see a reflection of who they are following in their life or who they claim to be following in their life. You don't see the reflection in their marriage. You don't see the reflection in their finances. You don't see the reflection in their business and their career. They are not following with the right heart. They may be following of the truth, but something has shifted in the heart. Why? Because the grace knows the state of the heart. And once the heart has been corrupted, the grace is going to shift. The grace is going to shift. I pray for you that may your heart forever remain humble. May your heart forever remain teachable. May you remain little in your own eyes. May you remain humble. May you remain small in your own eyes. May your heart not be lifted up. May the pride of your heart not deceive you. In the name of Jesus. Remember to share this with someone. Talk to others about it. And I'm going to see you tonight by 9 p.m. in the place of prayers. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.